Hi folks, and welcome to our celebration tonight from the Zone Garden Patio. Tonight we're doing an extra special meditation and reflections around Mary Magdalene and uh, all that she meant to the church and all she meant to us in reality. So I'm going to hand over here to Eileen McCourt, who will be our Master of Ceremonies. <laughs> Thank you, Declan. Yes, and you're all very welcome here tonight to this special occasion, Feast of Feast of Mary Magdalene. And she is very, very important and very, very relevant for what's happening today. And that's what we want to focus on in this post tonight, her relevance in this time in which we now find ourselves. And before we start, we need to get a few facts straight about Mary Magdalene. Hi, Ascended Master. Mary of Magdala, Magdala meaning tower, best known to us as the equal partner of Yeshua. She who incarnated in Judaic Palestine 2000 years ago as a teacher, visionary, a bringer of the light and a member of the Jewish secretive Essene community, teaching alongside Yeshua in his ministry. And it was Mary Magdalene who explained Yeshua's teaching to the other disciples. They hadn't a clue sometimes what he was talking about. And they hated her because Yeshua told her things he did not tell them. Now, let me give you an example of one of those things. Yeshua, one of his teachings was, I come from what is undivided. That was one of his teachings. And the disciples didn't know what he meant by that, but Mary Magdalene did. And she explained to them what he meant was that God is not a separate identity, that we are all one. We are all of the essence of God. And we've got to remember the time in which they incarnated. Judaic Palestine, <clears throat> 2000 years ago, was um, a very patriarchal, misogynistic society. Women were hated and castigated simply because they were feminine. And the church... The, Ju the Judaic religion, you know, promoted a very, very austere, punishing, autocratic God. And a God who was punishing and to be feared. And that Judaism was the forerunner of the Roman Christian church. The Roman Christian church is just simply a rehash of that Jewish religion all about fire and brimstone and a punishing God and all this. And it was this that Yeshua and Mary Magdalene came to change. That's why they incarnated at that time. Now they knew that their teachings would not be received at that time. But they knew as well that down the line, the seeds that they were sowing would come to fruition, way down the line. And now that time has come. They are now coming to fruition at this point in time, this point in the history of humanity in which we find ourselves. Now, where do we get the information from Mir about Mary Magdalene from? Well, we get it from the Nag Hammadi scripts, those documents that were found in the desert in Upper Egypt in 1945. Documents and scripts that were hidden, concealed, down deeply in the desert for over 1,500 years in order to escape the purgings of the Roman Christian Church because those teachings did not agree with what the Christian Church had in their canonical Gospels. The teachings of Yeshua and Mary Magdalene is what we get from these documents rather than the story of the life of Jesus that we get in the Gospels. Now, we've got the Gospel of Philip, Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Mary Magdala amongst the scripts in Hamadi. And let me read you something from the Gospel of Philip about Mary Magdalene. There were three who always walked with the Lord. Mary, his mother, the sister of his mother, and Miriam of Magdala, known as his companion. For him, Miriam is a sister, a mother, and a wife. And again, the companion is Miriam of Magdala. The teacher loved her more than all the disciples. He often kissed her on the mouth. When the disciples saw how he loved Miriam, they asked him, why do you love her more than us? 
And in the Gospel of Mary Magdala, we have Peter speaking to Mary, and here are his words to Mary. Sister, we know that the Saviour loved you more than all other women. Tell us the words of the Saviour that you remember, the things which you know that we don't, because we haven't heard them. And the same Gospel, Peter's talking to the disciples. Did he then speak with a woman in private without our knowing about it? Are we to turn round and listen to her? Did he choose her over us? There is a misogyny coming through of those male disciples against Mary Magdalene. And that's Peter. Peter who was named the first Pope of the Roman Christian Church. Let's look at some of the other saints in the early Christian Church. And who made these men saints? Only the early Christian Church. St. Clement of Alexandria, a Christian theologian, 150 to 215 common era. This is what he wrote. Now listen to this. Women's very consciousness of their own nature must evoke feelings of shame. St. Jerome, this is what he wrote. Women with child present a revolting spectacle. Saint Odilon of Cluny, not a very well-known saint, but still a saint. Here's what he wrote. Feminine grace is nothing but blood and bile. And we who recoil at the touch, even with the tips of our fingers, of vomit and excrement, how could we therefore desire to hold in our arms the very sack of excrement itself? the misogyny of the early church fathers. Paul, St. Paul, on whose writings the church is founded. Let's see what he wrote. Here's his letter to the Corinthians. Chapter 14, verses 35, 34-35. As in all the churches of God's people, the women should keep quiet in the meetings. If they want to find out about something, they should ask their husbands at home. It is a disgraceful thing for a woman to speak in church. St. Augustine of Hippo, 354 to 430 common era. This is what he wrote. I fail to see what use woman can be to man if one excludes the function of bearing children. And Pope Innocent III in the early 13th century. The sexual act is itself so shameful as to be intrinsically bad. Now, where did all these people think they came from? The pelican? The stork? Left under the cabbage patch? St. Albertus Magnus, a Dominican theologian, 13th century. Listen to this. Woman is a misbegotten man and has a faulty and defective nature in comparison to his. One must be on one's guard with every woman, as if she were a poisonous snake and the horned devil. Her feelings drive woman towards every evil, just as reason impels man towards all good. Now that's an important quote for what's coming next. Those two words, feelings and reason, that's the basis of tonight's post. Feelings coming from here, reason coming from here. So what chance did Mary Magdalene have 2,000 years ago? Condemned simply for being a woman. And it was Pope Gregory the Great in his homily 33, 33, in 591 AD, who created the persona of Mary Magdalene as a prostitute, a sinner possessed by seven devils. And here's what he wrote. She whom Luke calls the sinful woman, whom John calls Mary, we believe to be Mary, from whom seven devils were ejected according to Mark. And what did these seven devils signify, if not all the vices? It is clear, brothers, that the woman previously used the ungent to perfume her flesh in forbidden acts. There it is. The statement from Pope Gregory the Great in 591, declaring and pronouncing Mary Magdalene as the sinner the prostitute and the woman possessed by seven demons. The epitome of all the vices. But manufactured out of thin air, 
absolutely no evidence whatsoever. A victim of the misogyny of the early church fathers, cast into the dustbin of history. And it's this harlotized image of Mary Magdalene that has dominated the official church story from the time of Pope Gregory in 591 until 1969. And what happened in 1969? In 1969, the Vatican officially, but very quietly, and I repeat, very quietly, no fuss about it, cleared Mary Magdalene of the condemnation of prostitution. And from now on, she was to be identified with her role as the first witness to the resurrection, as told in the stories in the church canonical gospels. Then in 1988, in another official document, Pope John Paul II conceded that during the crucifixion again, as related in the Gospels, she played a very important part. And it's only in those Gospels we get that story. Now let's get the truth about Mary Magdalene, as far as we can know it at this point in time. She has been called the Apostle to the Apostles and referred to by Yeshua himself as the All, the woman who knows all, and the light bringer. That's the truth about her. Tarnished as she was by that same Roman Catholic Church that used her name as a brand for their own purposes and their own agenda. And that same male-dominated church that used her as an effective weapon against her own sex. The Magdalene Homes, for example. Shame and degradation, all associated with the feminine. And then, of course, the Da Vinci Code hit the headlines. A novelist was able to correct Mary Magdalene's record much more effectively than the decrees from the steps of the Vatican. Mary Magdalene has remained silent right down through history. But now her time has finally come. And herself and Yeshua knew their teachings would not be listened to during their time. That it would take many years before they would be appropriate to be listened to. And this time has now come. A very different world 2,000 years ago. But still very relevant. And her time has now come. So, what is the relevance, the importance of Mary Magdalene's teachings for us in this world in which we now find ourselves? Well, it's all about the masculine and the feminine energy. Remember the quote earlier, St. Albertus Magnus? Her feelings drive woman towards every evil, just as reason impels man towards all good. Feelings and reason. And let's talk about this word ascension, which is happening now big time on our planet Earth. Ascension doesn't mean physically floating up fully clothed above the clouds into heaven somewhere, as is portrayed in the Gospels. Jesus ascending, and then mother, his mother Mary ascending. That's not what ascension is. Ascension means spiritually evolving into a higher vibration level of energy, a higher level of spiritual awareness, a higher level of spiritual consciousness, out of this low base third level dimension energy into the fourth or fifth level where we then are on the vibration of love. Now let's put this into perspective. What is happening right now on our planet Earth, all the political acrobatics, the stunts, the game playing, the contradictions, the manipulations, the lies, the power struggles, etc., etc., etc. Why is that all happening? And the answer is, we do what we do because we are what we are. And what are we? We are third dimension level beings playing in this third dimension level playing field. That's what we are. And we willingly signed up for this. So how could we be so amazed and so horrified when it all happens? We signed up for this to expand our immortal soul through experience, experience, experiencing. Experiencing all that we can on this third dimension frequency level. And on this third dimension frequency level, we're surrounded by all the low vibration energies. That's where they all are, on this third dimension level. And we are players, not spectators, on this level. 
We're surrounded by the control freaks, the power maniacs, the warmongers, the psychopaths, the workaholics, the money worshippers, the addicts. They're all here around us. And they're all playing. And they have a right to choose what way they want to play in this dimension level. Now, if you want to go on a ski holiday and experience that, you've got to go to where the snow is and where the ski resorts are, right? If you want to experience a sun holiday, you've got to go where the sun is. So if you decide to choose to experience, to allow your soul to expand by experiencing third dimensional vibration living, you've got to come to a third dimensional level. And that's why we're all here. Surrounded by the control freaks and all the rest of them, they're all here playing in this field. And they have a right to do that. Now, a control freak, you know what a control freak is? A control freak in your family can be contained. He hasn't got such a big area to play about in, right? But these control freaks, when they get into the big institutions, the government, the religious institutions, the law, the finance, all these big institutions, when they get in there, that's where the damage is done because they've got a bigger playing area and they've got more control. They're control freaks, they're addicts. The same way as you have an alcohol, is it, yeah, people addicted to alcohol, people addicted to drugs, people addicted to gambling. These people are, con are addicted to control. It's what makes the blood flow through their veins. It's what makes them get up in the morning. And the bigger catchment area they have, the bigger playing field they have, the happier they are. And in the big institutions where they've got to the very top, where they have total control. And that's what's affecting us at the moment. And they can't be contained in there. And that's what's happening. And they have a right to choose that. It's neither good nor bad. It's neither right nor wrong. It just is as it is. That is life in this third level playing field. That's what it is. Now... What about all of all those who have chosen to ascend now in this great awakening right across humanity? What's the difference in those people who have chosen to ascend and those who have chosen to remain in this third dimension level for longer to expand their soul even further? And here's the difference. What has been the actual choice these people have made? What have they actually done to enable them to shift up into a higher dimension? And how do we differentiate between those who are ascending and those who are remaining in the lower conscious level? And this is where Mary Magdalene comes in. Those who have chosen to ascend are coming from the heart, the feminine heart. Those who have chosen to remain are still operating from the head, the masculine head. Now, the heart is the divine feminine, pure love. It's your emotions and your feelings. The head is the masculine, logic, reason, information processing. It's not the center of your beingness. Your heart is the center of your beingness, right? You're walking down the street and somebody waves across at you and you don't know whether they're looking at you or not. And you say, who, me? You point to your heart chakra to identify yourself. You don't say, who, me? You don't point to your head, you don't point to your feet. You point to there because you know that is the center of your beingness. That is pure love. That's your feelings and your emotions, which cannot be controlled. This part up here is manipulated. It's controlled. It is programmed. And it's filled with fear and filled with um, guilt. And now the new weapon is bribery. This is what's going on up here. You can, you can never ascend. This will never enable you to ascend to a higher vibration level. You can only ascend from here. And it's fear that people are working from at the moment. Now, take, for example, you're driving along and you come to a 30-mile speed limit and you slow down. Well, why do you slow down? Because the law tells you, yes, I know that. But why do you obey the law? I don't think it's because you think, well, if I slow down, I might save a life. I don't think that enters our head. I think what enters our head is there could be a speed camera, I could be fined, I could get points in my license. So you see, you obey the law because of fear. Am I right? It's fear. And men have been taught not to show their emotions, to keep their emotions in check, because that's weakness. Be a man, be tough, don't cry, don't be a baby, be a man. 
They're taught to block out that feminine part of them. So Mary Magdalene, all that repression about sexuality, about what you can do, about what, what, what you can't do, about what you can believe or not believe, we're all working according to someone else's dictates. What's in there is someone else's dictates, not you. This is you down here. We've got to act from the heart, act from love. That's your connection to source and your pure intention. Now, if your belief systems create the feeling of fear or guilt or anger or separation or blame in you, they are not to be trusted. It's not what you do, it's more why you do it that's important, as I've just explained with the 30 mile speed limit. You've got to go beyond man's beliefs. And those who are controlling us, those control, know exactly how to do that. The propaganda and working, messing with our heads, they're in there. That's what it all is. And they're trying to stop people working from their hearts because that's dangerous for governments. Okay? Mary Magdalene is all about coming from your pure, beautiful, divine heart, not from your head, which is full of manipulations, programmed, controlled, fear and guilt. And they know they can control your mind, but they cannot control your heart. Your mind, what's up here, is not capable of growing you into a higher dimension level. It cannot um, direct the process of transformation. That can only come from your heart. So the rise of the divine feminine is nothing to do with what we call women's lib or the battle of the sexes. Rather, it's about coming from your heart and not from your programmed, controlled head. Now, there's got to be a balance. You can't come completely and totally from your heart because your emotions will run away with you. And you can't come from your head without your own emotions. It's got to be a balance. But the problem with the world at the moment is there's too much of this going on and not enough of this. You just can't accept what other people are telling you. And it's been put out as informed opinion. But a lot of what's going around at the moment is not informed opinion. It's disinformed, it's misinformed, it's propaganda, it's guesstimates, it's estimates. You've got to do your own research, you've got to get your own information, do your own research and find out for yourself and get your own informed opinion. And not be led by either the stick or the carrot. A lot of card going on at the moment, bribery at the moment. And if you've got to bribe somebody to do something, if you've got to threaten them or you've got to um, intimidate them, then, then there's something wrong there. You've got to come from your own heart. And guilt and fear and bribery are not what you should be working from. Now, we often say when somebody gets a promotion and gets a job and he starts throwing his weight around, you that's gone to his head. You see, he's working from there. It's not from there. And that's what the problem is. Those who are in positions of control at the moment are working from here. They're not working from the heart chakra. There's too much head and not enough heart. And a lot of people know things are not right. They know these are, this is not right. They know things are not what they should be. But they're still going along with it. They're still working from the head rather than from the heart. And that's what this meditation is all about tonight. To get us to move from this controlled masculine energy here in the mind, in the head, which is totally propagandized, it's totally taken over, totally controlled. We're trying to move out of that and move more into the heart to balance the two. We can't work totally from either one or the other. You can't work totally from your heart chakra. Your emotions will run away with you and you can't work from this. You've got to have the balance. And that's what this meditation tonight is about, to ask Mary Magdalene to help us get that balance, to come out more of this and more from this. And do things because we know in our own beingness, which is here, not up here, our own pure beingness, uh, we've got to work from that. How we feel about this, how we genuinely, why do we do things, not because of fear or intimidation or guilt or bribery, but because we know they're coming from pure love, from our pure beingness here. Um, so that's what we're going to start the meditation now. And before we do that, remember, um, Mary Magdalene's symbol is the rose. And the word rose is encapsulated in the word Eros. And Eros was the Greek god of love, the Greek god of attraction. Right? And her symbol, she comes, that's her symbol, she comes on the blazing ray of scarlet and gold. 
and works through your heart chakra. And that's what herself and Yeshua were trying to do 2,000 years ago. But they knew it could never happen in their lifetime. The world was not ready. They knew it would happen right down the line. And that's what's happening now. This great awakening. These people can only awaken when they start to operate from their heart chakra, when they come out of this. You will never get to a higher dimension if you're coming from this here. You can only come from here. Okay, now we're going to move into Mary Magdalene's energy now with the, the drumming. Declan's going to drum for us and the drumming will bring us into a higher dimension because Mary Magdalene comes from such a high vibration. That energy cannot possibly come down to our low dense energy vibration here. It's, it's just vibrating too fast. So we have got to make some effort to move up into a higher vibration in order to connect with that. We can't see her say, because she is vibrating so fast, but we can connect with her. And the higher up we can bring ourselves, then the easier it is to make the connection. Now, don't expect a big thunder and lightning or a big slap with this energy. It's a very, very subtle, gentle feeling. It's not going to be like St. Paul on the road to where he's going to Damascus, was it where he could not with lightning. It's not going to be like that. It's a very gentle, very subtle feeling, and you will feel it. So now, let us meet with Mary Magdalene with the energy of High Ascended Master coming from the highest realms of the spiritual worlds. And first we need to ground and protect. So if you just get yourself settled comfortably and just follow me in the meditation. And follow the drum. The drum will bring us into a higher vibration level. And we've got the lovely... Mary Magdalene, candle of this here, if it stays lit in the breeze. Okay, so first of all, as in any meditation, we need to ground and protect ourselves. Okay, Declan, when you're ready. So big, breath, big deep breath in, first of all, and let it all out. And just follow the drum, let the drum take you into the higher vibration level. And grounding, first of all. See the roots, like the roots of a tree, growing from the soles of your feet, right down into Mother Earth. And feel yourself supported by the strong, loving, feminine energy of Mother Earth. And now protecting. Draw the white light of Holy Spirit around yourself and invoke, invoke the blue cloak of Archangel Michael to cover you all for your protection. And now that we're grounded and protected, we're ready to move ourselves up into a higher vibration level. Just follow me here. We're going to move up into our energy body, into our body of light. And we've got to do this slowly and very gently, otherwise the shock will be too great. So very gently, very slowly, feel your body moving upwards from where you're sitting. And as you come upwards towards your crown chakra, you're feeling brighter and brighter and lighter and lighter because you're moving into your body of light into your energy body. Keep coming upwards until the feet of your second body are on the head of your first body. And this is you in your energy body, in your body of light. There is no mass to you. You don't feel any mass or matter. You're on the vibration of unconditional love here, where you see yourself and everyone else as the bright, beautiful beings of light we all really are. So you don't judge, you don't criticize, you don't condemn. You accept as we are. Now sense yourself in your energy body, in your body of light. And remember, because you're in your body of light, in your energy body, all your senses are heightened from what they would have been in your physical body. Now from where we are now in our energy body, we call in our own guardian angels and our spirit guides. Feel their energy coming around you. And now we call upon the energy of Mary Magdalene. All you have to do is think of Mary Magdalene. See her in her magnificent, blazing, scarlet and gold light. Connect with your heart centre. Hold that thought there. And now send that thought up through your third eye, up through your crown chakra, out, 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 into the highest of the spiritual realms, attracting Mary Magdalene's energy back to you. 
Wait until you feel the connection. A very subtle, very gentle sensation. The link with Mary Magdalene. Know that she is connected with you and allow that to happen. Watch as a figure comes before you. It is Mary Magdalene. Blazing, shining, shimmering. Feel the love pouring from her heart into your heart. Feel her magnificent loving energy soaking into every part of your being. Soothing, calming, renewing. Mary Magdalene's ruby light gently touches your heart center. Feel the surge of energy as your heart opens and expands with love. Feel your heart opening. Feel the divine feminine rising through every part of your being. Feel the power of your heart increase as you allow all your emotions, all your feelings to come from your heart. As you live from your heart, from your pure beingness, truth, love, compassion, all coming from a beautiful, pure heart. It is your heart that generates all the love, all the love that flows from you out into all of humanity. The power of your pure heart, your channel through which you receive and transmit divine love and light. Your beautiful heart. Feel it open and expand as Mary Magdalene's light and energy renews and activates your heart center. Your heart is free. Your heart connects you to the natural world. Look into your heart. Feel the joy of living from your pure heart. It is only in your heart that you can feel the connection with your own God essence. Breathe in deeply. Breathing in the beautiful energy and light of Mary Magdalene. Feel the love coming from her blazing heart center into all of your beingness. Mary Magdalene, thank you for unveiling your ruby light and shining it upon me now. I welcome with open arms your guidance, support and protection as I undertake this sacred journey. Thank you for igniting within the cave of my heart a flame of love, a flame that will purify and cleanse all thoughts and memories of fear, anger and anguish. As your flame, as your flame burns brightly, I return to love and I welcome you to my heart as I allow this journey to unfold. Mary of Magdala, you who are known as the Magdalene, thank you for drawing close to me at this time. I welcome your essence into the cave of my heart as you ignite within me the ability to forgive and be forgiven. I am ready now to follow in your footsteps and stand within my power to serve humanity and be a leader of love. I thank you for silencing the voice of the ego with your fierce ruby light and for amplifying the voice of spirit so I can follow my spiritual truth, so I can follow my own heart. I welcome you now to stand in the forefront of my life and show me the areas of my life that are still controlled by my head. Thank you for helping me to see where the grievances are present in my life so I can release them. And now listen 
to Mary Magdalene as she speaks to you, to each one of us individually, as she fills your heart with divine feminine energy. Listen, listen, listen. As she reminds you what you really are, as she reminds you that you are love, Mary Magdalene gently takes your hand and places it on her heart. Listen now as she delivers an individualized message to each one of us, showing us the areas of our life where we are still working from our head, where we are still denying our heart. Ask her to show you in what areas of your life you are still working from your head and how you can move further into your heart. I am love. I am divine essence. I am divine expression. I am bountiful. I am magnificent. I am infinite. I am eternal. I am timeless. I am whole. I am perfect. I am complete. I am truth. I am love. God is love. I am the God energy in physical manifestation. I am. I am that I am that I am. Thank Mary Magdalene for the beautiful gift she has just given you. The beautiful gift of the divine feminine and coming from your heart, your very pure beingness. It is now time to return to your physical feeling body again, very slowly and very gently. Bring yourself down into your physical body as you take on the mass and weight of physicality. You feel heavier and heavier and less bright and less bright as you come downwards. And before you open your eyes, I'm now sending out to you the sacred symbol of Mary Magdalene, the symbol that we use in the practice of Mary Magdalene Reiki. Feel this symbol now touch your heart center. As I send it out to you with love from the heart through the vibration of sound, thought and intention. It is done. And when you are ready, open your eyes, shake out your hands and feet and ground yourself once more. Go forward now on your own spiritual path with the balance of the masculine and feminine energies within your being. Come more from your heart and not from your head. The balance of the two is what you need to get. Let go of fear, knowing that your soul is flying freely. You are singing your own song, your own beautiful note in the harmony of all creation. Thank you, Mary Magdalene. And just as a last word, I hope that has meant something for you and hope you got some benefit from it. And just to recap on some, some things there. The power freaks and the control maniacs control, who are in charge of our world at the moment and who are in positions of authority and power. They are coming from the head, not from the heart. That's what the problem is. And they have a right to choose how they play out in this third dimensional level playing field. They have a right to do that. It's not neither right nor wrong, neither good nor bad. It just is. We do what we do because we are what we are. We are third level dimensional players on this third level dimensional playing field, surrounded by all the control freaks, all the maniacs, all the everything that's undesirable. They're all here on this playing field. 
that's what happens. And listening to your own heart is the greatest step in your transitioning into the next dimension. Now, I have here with me just, I have already got two books on Mary Magdalene published. The first one is Behind Every Great Man. That's her life with Yeshua in the Essene community 2,000 years ago. The other one is Out of the Mind and Into the Heart. That's her teachings, which are coming to fruition. The seeds that were sown then by herself and Yeshua are coming to fruition now, at this point in the history of humanity. And the third book is The Universe is Mental, because one of the great hermetic principles is the principle of gender. The balance of the masculine and feminine energies. Everything has a mixture of masculine and feminine in it. And the, the, the ideal way is to get the balance. And in just a few days' time, my next book is coming out. It is called The Singing Soul. That's what we were talking about tonight. It'll be on Amazon in a few days. I'll post it when it does go up. The Singing Soul. Every soul yearns to freely sing its own song. And you can't do that if you're coming from here. You're singing someone else's song. You can only do that if you're coming from here. To your own pure love and your own true beingness. The centre of your being is that. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope it meant something. And thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you so much folks for joining us. And we will be going live again at some time in the future I'm sure and celebrating full moons and solstices and such so but until then yeah. namaste and thank you again for joining and until we meet again namaste <laughs>